then lastly, I'm going to share my screen. Anyone want to see my screen? Cool. Yep, you're coming in fine. Let me see if I can make oh, this bigger. So last time we talked about um, testing React components. What do you remember about that? Anyone just show that? Um, we write a, a file, not write, that's the test file. That file has tests in it written um, you're trying to check what's printed basically in the screen with a with a kind of object called screen that you import from the React testing library. Mm -hmm. uh, you use several methods, and you also can check functions. I think that was the last thing that that we how to check that a function is giving you a specific. No, we were doing something about forms, but. Mm -hmm. No, I don't remember the last part of the class. Okay, oh. so I think you said a lot. Um, I think most of it, most of it is correct. Um, could, let's if we do some bullet points, and somebody else can also help us. Um, so they're written in a test.js file. Um, I guess they're inside. Um, we put them inside uh, an underscore underscore test folder. Um, anybody else or another bullet point? Um, that uh, React comes with Jest standard? Mm -hmm. So, Re React, that's a good, that's a good, um, React doesn't come with Jest. When we create an app, what comes with Jest is create React app. Mm. Create um, React app, app comes with Jest. So if the thing is that we don't build, we don't, we don't build create, uh, we don't build React apps. Um, on, we don't build React apps from scratch. Uh, we use the create React app, which is a sort of start, starter kit in a way. Um, if we build a, a React app from scratch, we'll do npm install React, and there won't be any just included. But I, I think that's a good point about that, that we want to unpack here. I guess from here, the question is, what is just? What is Jest? It's a library uh, that gives you tools to uh, to initiate test files. Yeah, library. Um, library. Let me say library slash framework. Say that the last part again, Douglas. 
Um, it allows you to perform tests through the, to the, the tools it provides. Mm -hmm. So let's see how we can maybe uh, use a little bit more accurate language there, library framework. Um, to, yeah, I guess the, to, to test JavaScript code. It doesn't, it's not only for React, you can reuse uh, just the unit testing, for instance. We're going to use just for backend testing as well. Um, so yeah, and this this whole is a you know set of tools. Maybe if we keep going here, what are some of those tools that we saw? Somebody else. What were what were the things that we were writing in those JavaScript files in those test files? Uh, yeah, Douglas. Um, to be, I think was one of them. Mm -hmm. There's a function to be. That to be, okay. What else? To be in document. To be in document. Let me, let me and I think it's to be in the document. What else? I think one is to have been called with. To have been called with. Okay, Any, anything else? No, oh, with is not spelled like that. <laughs> These are all functions. Um, there's the expect. Mm hmm. This is expect. Uh, that expect. Uh, no, actually, this is not that expect. This is just expect. And there are some others. Um, what, which ones are the ones we use to actually write the test? Well, I guess like, yeah. I text. Test, right. And what do we wrap test into? When we when have we... multiple tests, when we have multiple tests of this kind, what do we write? We, we wrap them in something else. A describe. A describe function. The describe function's job is just to group tests, saying these tests are supposed to describe the app component or are supposed to describe the form component, uh, for instance. Um, now here, this, uh, let me, let me park the eraser here. Where is this line? These specifically, these guys here, are known as matchers. These are matchers. There are there are maybe a hundred of them or so. Um, you can you can find them all in the Jest documentation. Uh, if you go to the Jest documentation and type in matchers, or even if you Google Jest matchers, you're gonna find them all. Now, some of them, like to be, this one is just comes with it some of the other ones like to be in the document this one we install a library um the react testing library um 
is the one that provides to be in the document. Just itself doesn't provide that to be in the document. Um, and if you now know that all these functions under the hood, somebody had to write them, some code is under the hood of those. To be in the document just has some code under the hood that is using the just matchers um, that are available to, to have us, you know, write and read more English-like um, function names rather than us having to do that. Um, these, um, these don't have a name uh, specifically, but these are all provided by Jess. Provided by Jest, um, expect is what we will let us actually make an assertion, make an expectation, and um, assert that expectation. Test, we write, we write our expectations. Well, I guess like here we have um, our describes have tests, our tests have expectations. Um, they are sort of like nested. So the scribes will have multiple tests. A test will have multiple expectations. Um, cool. Anything else that anyone wants to add to this? That maybe I'm forgetting. Okay. So let's jump back in the code. I'm gonna, let me save this to share it later. Oh. I guess I'm gonna need to export it later. Um, cool, I think I might need this. Let me see if I can minimize this. Okay, I guess I can put it here. Oops, there is this floating windows. I don't know if you can see them, but uh, some of them don't work very well. Let's figure that out. Okay, so let me open the terminal. And this, this code that, that I have is the same one we were working on uh, last week. this uh, we go to was it core I don't remember where I had put it no I think it was actually let me just clone it again it was something react test and react apps I can share these in the slack channel Go share, and from here we have we have this we have a few branches um, that you can look at. There is a tested app that one has all the tests finished uh, and test written during class. This is what we had um, when I found this. I think I should probably put these. Let's see if I have anything to core unit seven. Oh, okay, it is here. Test and React apps. Oh, but I think actually this is just, this is just a readme. So I'm just gonna do it in my desktop for now. Um, So that created the Pursuit Core Web Test and React app starter. Um, and if you look here, at least if you do, if you do get branch, you're gonna see that you are, by default when you just clone something, you are in the master branch. Um, 
well, what I want is I want to get back to that branch. So what I'm going to do is git checkout. Um, I'm going to create an another branch with the same name, and then I'm going to pull from that. So this is test render class. And once I'm in this branch, um, just pull from origin master, git pull origin test written during class. Um, that brings in all the all the content that was in that branch into my local local computer. We can see that we wrote the donation card, the form, and the progress bar test. So let's do let's open this with code. here yeah, maybe there's some of this now also somebody's joining That. And let's get back here. Also, I need to install the dependencies because I just cloned. Let's have that. Well, that goes there. Let's take a look at what our test was. So we have this test component. Let's talk a little bit about what we had here. Um, so I think the first test we started with was the donation card test. Um, where oh that's something that we forgot we forget about queries but here we can see that the important functions to remember as the render and the screen that you import from the testing library react um, you call render and you invoke your component you pass in the props as you would uh, normally um, and then when to get stuff from to query stuff that was put in that dom um, in that virtual, well, actually, the, the JS DOM, which for our purposes, it works exactly the same as the as the as the normal DOM with some limitations. Uh, we want to query what is being rendered, so we can do that with screen that get by text, um, and expect here we're sort of expecting that there's something in that rendering that says Alejo donated three hundred fifty fifty six dollars, um, because you know according to our donation card implementation. Um, we are expecting, oh, that's fair, it doesn't, it doesn't open up. We're expecting that it will put out my name, the word donated, um, followed by the amount with a dollar sign. So we can expect to get that, because um, that's what we intend to get for this given prompt being passed. Uh, we also expect a, a paragraph to appear that says, I hope you have a good time. And we also get that by text. Um, this um, get by text come their queries that come from the testing level React. They are not built into. Um, they're not built into Jest. Uh, they come from the React testing level library. Um, if, you know. I'll say see the docs for other queries. Um, there are others like get by label, uh, get by all text. Um, there is also find by all text, find by label, find by uh, text. Um, and I'm not going to get into the differences, um, but you should check out the documentations for that. Um, Cool, and then here we are actually writing our expectations where we say expect the donation heading to be in the document. Again, this is a matcher that comes from um, um, comes from the testing library React. And here we have, well, we want, we expect that donation heading to tag name to be an H5. We expect it to be a heading. And this is how we can assert that is a heading. Um, just a reminder here, the donation heading here 
is an HTML element we can see even showing up here. Um, even though this code is not running in the browser and there is no there is no screen where there is no hidden screen where this is rendering um, uh, or where this is showing, uh, is rendering abstractly like this render function works just like React um, will work, uh, but that all is an abstraction. There is nothing really showing up anywhere that's hidden. Um, and but here, this element donation heading, this we can treat this as HTML element. So Anything that we will do in, in the DOM, um, any properties, um, they will be available here. Tag name is one of them. Who remembers any other property of the HTML element? I can chat out. Could be class name, could be also value. Class name, or it could also be value. Just because I want to, I want to bring this point home. Let me show you here. Even in GitHub, um, now open the developer tools. Put this down here. I zoom zoom here. Uh, I'm going to select this element, for instance. Um, this H, this A tag that I selected. This one. Uh, oh, I, I think maybe some of you may not know this. Um, so, if, I guess nice little feature that, we, um, that Chrome has. When I select something in the HTML here, like this A tag, if I wanna get it in the console, I can do dollar sign zero, dollar sign zero. And you can see that if I hit enter, that is what I get. Uh, the element that I select in the HTML will become dollar sign zero. I think there is somewhere where it says that. Um, maybe here you can see this dollar sign zero. That is in the console, if you do dollar sign zero, you're gonna get that element. So here I could say like let um, link equal dollar sign zero, and that's gonna be that same element, right? And this A tag is an HTML element. And if I wanna find out all of the properties they have, they, I could do A dot, A period. Um, Ah, I was actually expecting all the properties to show up for add a complete. I think I'm gonna need to start writing one. So let's do class name. Maybe oh, you mean link. Thank you, yes, link. That, now all of them show up. Um, we can see to string type username, there is a whole bunch um, content editable edit. There's some that I don't even know. Um, we, we talked about class name. Class name seems to be empty, right? This this a tag doesn't have any class, but it has an href. Let's try to get that one, href, and we get the href that is in the HTML. Um, maybe inner text. If we do inner text, we actually get the string that has the inner text of that. So this link is a um, HTML element um, that has a ton of properties. For the most part, most common properties will also be available uh, in our testing environment, JS DOM. See, value, right, I guess links don't ha really have a value, only input boxes have a value. So link value gives me undefined. So this is just to show you, to make you aware that when you get something when, with a query like this, you the HTML element is returned, and with that, um, you can access any of the properties, just as if it was in a real browser. Um, most properties will work uh, exactly the same. Um, so here we do the same for the message paragraph. We try to get something with that content, um, and we expect it to be in the document. We expect it to be in a paragraph. Um, I really had asked, how could we check that the paragraph, the heading comes before the paragraph? How can we make, how can we make sure that, um, well, that the heading will show um, on top of the paragraph? So we can't really test that. We can't really test if the paragraph is in is on top uh, if, the, if the heading is on top of the paragraph. 
because if you change it with CSS, and with CSS, even though in the HTML, the, the heading might come first and the paragraph might come later, with CSS, you could flip the order. Uh, but in the HTML, it will still be the same. So the closest we can get to that is we get the parent node, um, parent element uh, of the donation heading. Um, actually, let's try that here too. Let's see who is the parent of the link that we have. Link that parent element. We can see that the link parent element is a strong tag. If we look at the HTML, we see that the, the A tag, that link, is inside of a strong tag. So anything that is wrapping it is its parent. Um, so the parent here is the P tag, uh, sorry, the strong tag. Um, in our case, the parent of uh, the donation heading and the parent of the message, uh, if we look at our donation card component, um, we can see that the parent of the H5 and the parent of the P tag is this div with class name media body. Right? And we would just want to check. We grab the parent and we put the parent in this variable. Uh, and we just check is the child node, is the first child, expect the parent first child to be the donation heading uh, and expect the second child, the one at index zero, uh, index one, to be the message paragraph. Um, and in this way, we can uh, attest to a certain degree, assess to a certain degree um, that the age, the heading will come before. The paragraph uh, and so on. Um, let me stop here for a second. Any questions about this quick review? Uh, I want. Can I see again the, what you did with the console and yeah. what, what things are accessible through there? Yeah. So when you when you like you have yeah. Wait. Can you repeat the last part? Yeah. I mean. Like you had things before and they got erased, but yeah, maybe I should just watch the oh. recording because that they went fast. Like I was like, I see, I can see. You, can, you, can you do something similar to that? I have, I have this, um, I have this problem where I keep clearing the console. Um, please, please, you know, shout it out when you see me do that. I, I need to stop doing that because then that doesn't let people see what I typed before. Um, so I apologize about that, but uh, let me repeat what we did here. So what I did here is I opened the console and then when you click on this item, you can hover over the document uh, and inspect what you want. So let's say we want to inspect this clone or download button. When I click yeah. on it, when I click on it and I had that tool enabled, it gives me here to the HTML. It's, there's, there's a mm -hmm. summary tag. I didn't even know that that existed. <laughs> um, so there's this summary tag. And if I wanna if I wanna look at it like from JavaScript, what happens is Chrome will let me access that through that. Thank you for whoever drew that side, uh, circle over there. That dollar sign zero. So if I go to the console and I do dollar sign zero and hit enter, it turns out that I get that summary element. Um, so so that then I can inspect it. So that I can say dollar sign zero that parent element. Okay, and what's dollar sign zero meaning in this case? Yeah, dollar sign zero just means the current element you have selected in the elements tab, in the elements tab. So it's always dollar sign zero, basically, to access this. That's correct. They they just they decided let's call it that variable for some reason. Um, if you don't have anything selected, so if I have if I refresh the page, for instance. Yeah. Um, if I don't have anything selected and I do dollar sign zero, I get undefined. Mm, okay. that's, be that's because I don't have anything here selected. But once I select something, like now, I can do dollar sign zero. Um, and that gives me the element, and then I can inspect the dollar sign zero dot class name. We can see the class name. We can see, um, let's maybe take a look at the styles. Style. And you can see that there's something called CSS style declaration and it has all the styles. Um, and it's a really long list of all the CSS properties. Um, how would we do that? Like let's say dollar sign zero didn't exist. Anyone remembers how we will do, how can I get that button? 
this is this unit you get you do get element by id or anything else the most uh, yeah the most efficient thing is by id you get element by id but we don't know if that element has an id does it have an id it doesn't have an id but we can get by class uh, so these are these are dumb queries it's, i'm going to copy this all these all these classes and uh, it, yeah. it's not it's not also sure it's the only element with this class id with this class name i mean that's a good point yeah classes are supposed to be reusable so there might be more than one thing that has this class but if you know the the way to do it without that will be instead of get element by id is there an element yeah there's get element by class name uh, we haven't used that let's try this one here yeah so we see that we get an html collection and which is an array like element you can see the, the square brackets but it's not an array it's an array like and if I do um, one at index zero, then I get back that element. Now here I have the same element that I had with um, the other one. So if I do like class name, I get the same thing. In fact, I could even do this. Dollars and zero is a triple equal this, and we get true. Because what I have selected with dollars and zero is the same that as I'm selecting with this side here. These are DOM queries, uh, get element by class name, get element by the um, query selector, um, which replace some of this. Um, get element document that query selector as well, that we could use to get an element from the DOM. Um, when we're in test, when we're in a testing environment, we don't have, actually, we do have those. We have query selector. I could select stuff with query selector, get element by class name. Uh, but the React testing library discourages that because um, they want you to think from the user perspective. And from the user perspective, a user is able to locate something by text, for instance. They're not, they don't know anything about like query selector or get, get element by class name. That's only useful for the developer. Um, but a user will find stuff by text. Actually, now that we're here, let's do a quick review. Um, React testing library. Let's take a look at the at the queries that we have here. Oh, actually, um, need to go read the docs, the actual box. And here we have queries. So this get by, get all by, query by find by uh, and those you see that they have like um, that star query by star that means that there are more than one um, and if we keep scrolling down here uh, we get by label text so there is get by label text query by label text find by label text um, oh actually you can see them over here um, and a user will be able to find something if it has a label on it. So that's why they, instead of this get by label text under the hood is still using document that query selector or document that, um, probably document that query selector, um, not document by ID. Um, but a user will be able to find that if, if it has a label on it. So that's why they wrote this function. So that's the one get by placeholder text. If an input field has a placeholder, the user will be able to find it and know what they should type there. Um, again, this under the hood is probably using document that um, query selector. Um, get by text, you know, if the element literally has text inside, the user will be able to find it like that. Um, get by alt text, if it's an image, uh, you should always include your alt text. Um, by title, I think by title is interesting. I think we could use title. Oh, here the example is um, here the example is an SVG image, so we don't use that one much. By display value, you might use display value for form inputs. Uh, display value is when you have an input and it has some text inside. It has a display value. Um, I think we're gonna get to use this one uh, when we should test the form. Um, yeah, you can see that they use it for text area, select, um, by role, this one is interesting. Uh, by role, there is, it turns out that for accessibility, these are really interesting documents. Um, 
you can specify a role attribute on your HTML elements. Let's say you create a uh, progress bar. The role for that should be progress, uh, progress bar. And there is some standard roles um, that all elements or most, most important elements have. Uh, and these roles are very important for, um, for making the web more accessible. You don't have to, some of them you have to specify explicitly. Some of them you don't have to specify explicitly. For instance, a button, by default, the role of a button is button. So I can get a button saying, get by role and then pass the pass button string in there. And that's gonna find me the button, um, et cetera. Um, yeah, some typical area, area roles, um, et cetera. So it is actually a really interesting, really interesting read. Oh, this, I think we didn't talk about this. Get by test ID is a skate hatch for uh, whenever you need to get something and um, there is no, there is no text, there is no value, there is no role, and you need to get it. Like for instance, we're gonna need this to get the form. Um, there's a few ways in which you can get the form. We can also put a test ID on the form itself, and we'll be able to get it by that. Another way in which we get it is we get first an input box that has a label, so we can get the input box by label, and then say, okay, the parent of this has to be a form, um, and then fire the submit event on that. Um, so yeah, all these queries uh, come from the testing library um, and that we're using here. And there, there are quite a few of them. Other questions or comments? Can, can I ask one little more? Like, sure. When, when you were like, uh, using properties or checking properties of a variable named link. Mm -hmm. How did you get to have a variable named yeah. link in the console? It's a fair question. Um, the way in which I did that was I did, well, first I selected the element that I wanted. So here I, I'm not going to have link, I'm just going to have button. Yeah. So here, this is dollar sign zero, right? This is the element that dollar sign zero is pointing to. Yeah. Right? What I did was I said, let btn for button, yeah. I can name it whatever I want, equals dollar sign zero. Oh, that's what you did? Okay, yes. okay, I didn't see the part. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that generated all my confusion. Okay, thank you. Yep, you, I just assigned it to something a little bit more descriptive than dollar sign zero. And then you can access it from the same console as long as you don't clear it out. Correct, actually, if I change here dollar sign zero to something else, let's say I change dollar sign zero to this new pull request button. Um, yeah. If I go here to button, I still have I still have my green button, but now dollar sign zero is pointing to the pull request button. All right. Uh, but my That's button, cute. the variable that I saved, is still pointing to the other one. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Cool, other questions? Okay, so this is important where the, the test for the form is just gonna build on top of this. Um, I think let's, before we jump into that, um, which we have about 40 minutes to do, I wanna say, Sergio, you mentioned something about a form and I went, uh, or about a function, about mocking a function and we need to take a look at that. We did that in the form test. Um, here we did the same stuff where we rendered the component. I don't know what this is like here. Um, we rendered our form, um, and here we wanted to check that the input, the input um, change is handled by the handle form input when the when the field text uh, changes. So we wanted to make sure here that the test purpose of this test is making sure that when somebody types in an input box, we're firing our function that will let us set the state. Uh, later on. Um, what we did here is create a mock function. It's, it's, you can think of, yeah, it's a mock function. There's no better description than that. Um, and we do that with jest.fn. Uh, again, jest is always available, just like console.log is always available uh, because we're in a jest 
a tested environment. Same for test, same for describes and from expect. We don't have to import them from anywhere uh, because we're in a just context. Um, so here we do just that fn. That creates a mock function. It's, you can think of it as a function that lets you spy into it. It lets you know what has happened to it. Um, and from here, we see that, well, now we get the name input, the message input, and the slider. And we get them by label text because all those elements have a label. Uh, if you look at the form here, let me close this here. All those elements have a label, the name label or the name input message, etc. So we can get them by label. Um, oh, also something, sort of something important here is the getting by label is, would not work if your label doesn't have HTML4. HTML4 is what marries a label to an input. So you see here HTML4 and we pass message input. That message input has to be the same as the ID um, uh, of, the, of the input element. That's how you can pair up basically a label with an input box. Pairing a label with an input box is also a good practice because when you click the label, you want the input box to be selected. Um, that also happens. So here we get those elements by label text. Um, and now here we start to simulate a user event. So we use user event that type uh, name input. User event that type comes from this other library uh, that is included in the React testing library. Wait, let me see. Um, it's including the React testing library, uh, user event. And this user event will let us simulate um, user events, more specifically the type event. And there are some others you can look into in the documentation. To that user event, we pass in the name, the input that we want to simulate the event on. In this case, we want it to simulate that in the name input. And we pass in the text that we want to be typed there. Uh, we want to be typed there, John Snow. Um, then after that has been, that has happened, what we want to check is, we'll expect that handle form input mock, the mock function we created at the top uh, was call. Uh, and that the last time that it was call, it was call with the name input as the first argument and just know as the second argument. Um, this again is sort of like spying on the function that we pass um, and checking that it was invoked. Um, and we do the same for uh, the others. There's one, one uh, difference that one sort of case we need to be aware of, which is for change events um, on like a slider or on a select box, for instance, um, we need to use the fire event instead of the user event. This is because the user event uh, library doesn't have um, a user event change yet. Um, I think they're currently working on it, um, and it should come, it should come soon. Um, but there is also some compli some technical complications that I was reading in the GitHub issues uh, that come with that, and they're trying to work that through. So just know that if you want to find a change event in a file, uh, let's say a file input when you're trying to upload a file uh, or in a select box, um, etc., you're going to need to use the fire event. What we want to do here is change the slider to be a to be a value to have a value of 100. Um, here fire event comes from the testing library react um, and as opposed to the type function here the first argument is still the same we need to pass in the element that we want to fire that event on the second argument uh, is going to be the event object the event that is going to be passed to our event handler, which in this case is the handle for an input box. Um, and then the set, the value will be set to, um, to 100 on that. Note here that like this, this event, this object that represents the event, we need to say target because through the event, we usually get the target and instead of target, we do value. Um, then here we just expect that the last time our function was called was with an amount the with the amount input and uh, the current value of that is 100. Uh, any questions about this?
amount, where is amount input coming from? Good question. Uh, amount input, where is it coming from? So um, amount input, this is just a text variable and it comes from, if we look at our form, um, we can see, oops, let me open this to the side. Um, we can see that here we have this input. This input is of type range and it has an ID amount input, right? Oh, so okay. that, that input has that ID. But where it really comes from is from our handle input change function. Our handle input change function, we, you can see that we attach it everywhere on change, on change, on change, even in the range. And what we're doing here is we just get the ID uh, of the event target. Um, we get the value from the event target that value. Um, and lastly, we just call a handle for input, which is a function that comes through props uh, that will be passed from the parent, the parent component. Um, and this is a function that we wanna sort of spy on, um, checking if it was called with the right um, we were the right elements. Um, so that ID, this ID and value, this is what I'm expecting this to be pass here. We want to expect that it was called with the amount input ID and the value of 100. Does that make sense? Um, the, and that's why you called handle form input uh, the function inside the render. Um, this one, this function, I don't call inside of the render. I mean, um, the render, the mock render. Uh, the mock render here. Yeah. Handle for input. That's correct. That's correct. This is the this is the function that we're mocking. Mm -hmm. Those names have to match, right? To to, um, to work. This name, the name of the prop here, has to match. That's correct. This uh -huh. this name can be anything. But this is the name of the prop. This is the function that we're, this is the functionality that we're currently testing of the mm -hmm. form, um, et cetera. But in the, in the actual website, it's not passed as a prop. The, what is passed as a prop is on change and a function that contains that function. Um, let's, let's take a look at the app, which is what called the form. We can see, we can see this. The form here, and then there is a handle for input. Oh, it is passed in the real. Okay, okay, okay. Here we're gonna pass the real one. This handle for input function is this guy here. The handle for input function, what it does is just sets the state based on the ID that was passed to tell which property of the state to set. If it's, we're setting the name input, the message input, or the amount input. Oh, so that's a function that applies to the form and to the input. There's an on change that calls that function. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And that's how, that's how then in here, when the user types in the name in the form, uh, the donor name, um, this is, we're gonna keep, we're gonna store that in the app state. Uh, when the user types in a message in the form, we're gonna keep that in the app state as well. Um, lastly, the same for the amount that they select on the slider. Um, we're going to keep that in our state. Um, other questions? Thank you for those questions, Sergio. Can you see yourselves in the screen or no? Maybe not. No, I didn't show Zoom features like that. Okay, because I'm like, I have you right next to the code. Uh, I want to see it. No, I can just see the code. Okay. Okay, so let's get, in the half an hour we have, let's get into um, testing the app itself. Um, I think from, Anyway. 
So here to this form, I think I have added, I had added a few other tests that are helpful. Let me, um, let me maybe copy those. I will go to the tested app. Need to react app source components tests. I want to show you some of those that are helpful, um, but you can review them later. So here, for instance, one test that I wrote was make sure that the form displays four input controls. Um, wait, actually four, oh yeah, I guess for the name, uh, or, uh, uh, something where they can put the name, the message, uh, the amount, and lastly, the donate button. So that's what we're doing here. We just get those elements um, and make sure that they're in the document. So this is just checking that the form shows everything that it should show. Um, here we check that this, uh, the form displays the info that was passed as props. So if I pass form donor SpongeBob message come down here, form amount that, we should expect to get um, from the DOM um, something that has that donor SpongeBob that has that message and that has that amount. Uh, and we expect everything to be in the document. And actually, if we think about this, this get by display value is an implicit assertion uh, in the sense that if there's nothing in the DOM that is called SpongeBob, this is gonna throw an error. Um, this is gonna throw an error and our test will fail. And then we'll find out that, well, we, something broke, we need to go check it out. Um, this, this um, some, sometimes people write it just like here. Instead of, instead of writing this here, um, and like this, I wanted to break it down, but an example you might find online is that this part, get by display value form donor, will actually show, they will just do it here. Get by display value uh, form donor, um, expect that to be in the document. Um, oh, also here I'm using the get display value form donor. This is, um, this is checking that the input box, if I pass in the form donor SpongeBob, that the input box has received the prop, uh, has received the value from the prop. So that input box should be filled with the text SpongeBob, for instance. Um, and that's what I'm doing now here, get by display value. Um, this get by display value will only work in input fields. Um, it doesn't work on the, actually, I don't know for sure if it will work on a div or in a paragraph. Um, but it's mainly used to check that input box has a certain value. Um, so here, I, here I'm just checking that the values that were passed from app or from whoever is the parent component of this form um, are displayed inside of the input boxes. Um, this is, I think this is the one we did, handle input changes with handle for input. Uh, or is it that one? Yeah, it is that one. Um, same thing, I didn't pass any donor messages or amount, I just pass in the handle form input, um, which is using the mock function that we have here, and we do the same thing. Um, lastly, the last test that I had here was, well, let's check that whenever we try to submit the form, our handle submit function is called. Um, same, same drill, we have a mock function, handle submit with just fn, we pass that to our component. Um, and here we can see here that the way in which I got the form, you know, the form doesn't have a text, it doesn't have a get by text. Um, it doesn't have uh, a label, it doesn't have a placeholder. So what I did here was get by test ID, get by test ID form. I, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if get by, get by role will also work. I'm not sure. Um, but actually, I think, I think we need to talk about this get by test ID. So as I said, this is a skate hatch for whenever you can't use any of the other queries for some edge cases like this form. Um, if we go here back to the form, you can see that I have the form with data dash test ID. This spelling has to be exactly like that, test ID, and I put a form there. What that does, this is known as data attributes. Some of you might have seen them. Um, this, is, this is how you can put sort of extra information into an element um, that is not one of the built-in ones, basically. Um, and here we just add an attribute 
data test ID with form so that then we can get it by that text um, ID. Uh, and in fact, that's what we're doing here then. Get by test ID form. Uh, we use fire event to submit the form. Uh, this is important as well. Um, we do fire event that submit and we pass in the form. And then lastly, we just expect handle submit our mock function um, to have been called. Okay, any questions, thoughts? Okay, so let's look at uh, let's look at our app. Um, so let me save this. Also, if um, if your oops, if your tests were not running last time, reach out to me and we can troubleshoot. Um, test. Combine up found. Did I do, uh, I, I did npm install in the wrong place. Um, while that goes on, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna create here the test app.test.js. And here, um, we're going to import React. Um, let me take a look at this other. Um, we're gonna need the render um, as well. So let me copy this. Render screen on fire event. Um, we're gonna need the user, the user event as well. So let's put this here. Cool. Um, now let's try npm test to see our test running. Um, we see all of them passing, but one, the one that's not passing is just this that I have empty. It says your test suit must contain at least one test. So let's do here describe app component and let's test it. So let me take a look, let me get a refresher on what were some of the testing functionality that I had included here. So I'm going to go back to tests and app. Um, renders a GoFundMe page. Um, this one is, this is one. Form input values are updated as content is entered in them. Let's see what else. Um, submitting a donation makes a post request to API slash post and adds a new recent donation. I think this is the one that we should focus on. Um, submitting a donation resets all fields to its default. Um, and that's it. Um, okay, so let's let's write this one, basically. So let's copy this here. Now this is um, all the others built on top, um, or this one builds on top of all the others. But this has an added the last the last added complexity, which is um, our form, our app, our app is making a network request with Axios. Let me put this here. We can see that in here we import Axios and here we use it. Um, I think here I just use, let's take a look at this. So let's take a look at the handle submit first. So. Whenever this handle submit will be fired when we submit the form, um, we can see that we get everything from the state. Um, and we get everything from the state. We have, if we have a form donor, if there is text in the form donor name, what we do is um, we create a new donation object with, uh, that has a name, a message, and amount. And the values of that will be what we have in state. And then we do, well, this dot post donation and we just post that donation, the new donation, we await that. Um, 
And lastly, we just add it to our all donations. Um, we update the raise amount uh, and we update the state to the all donations, which now has the posted donation. Um, we have the raise amount to be the new total after that last donation. And we reset uh, our input fields to, be empty, to have empty strings again. So the important part is here this. Um, the fact that we're posting, posting our donation um, and that we're doing that with Axios. So if we go to the post donation function, which is here, um, we see that I'm, I'm just using the JSON placeholder API as an example. This is not gonna save it anywhere, but it's making the network request. Um, and we just do access.post, the URL and the element that you want to send, in this case, our donation uh, of the return data. So this here is an asynchronous operation, as you're well aware of. Um, and how do we test that in here? How do we, you know, we don't want, when we're in a testing environment, we don't actually want our test to fire a network request and add something to our backend when this test is mock data. It's not, it should never be stored in our backend. We need to mock back. Uh, and that's what we're going to do here. So first of all, let me review here really quickly. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna copy this. This I think we're already familiar with. So the first thing is rendering the app. Um, I will need to import app as well. Import app. Can't find module. I think well, I forgot where to input that. Yes, it's gonna be here, and then here. App is there. Okay, so we import app, we render app. App is our top level component, doesn't have any props. We get all the elements that, uh, all the input boxes. These input boxes um, are in the form. Um, remember that app has everything inside. And now we are interested not in testing as much the form functionality. We do that in the form test JS um, individually. But here we want to check how the whole, like how this component that has some sub components all interact and if it works as expected. Um, so we can see here that I'm getting the inputs um, by placeholder text. Uh, this is because if we go to the form, I think, yeah, I place on placeholders, John Doe, um, placeholder good luck, and this one, other doesn't have a, a placeholder. We can see that we're actually getting that one by roll. But these two we get by placeholders. We could also get them by label as we saw earlier. Um, now the amount slider I could get by label, um, or I could also get by roll. By default, I, actually let's take a look at it here. Um, let's take a look at this slider. Yeah. Um, this is the slider here in our code. But by default, a slider will have a roll, an area, um, I, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, an area roll that is slider, that's by default. That is an accessibility feature that accessibility enable devices will be able to recognize and offer ways uh, to um, modify those elements, um, et cetera. So I, I get that by role. There's a, actually a role built in called slider that will be any input type uh, range. Um, as I said, again, we could do that. We could get this by label as well. Um, we get the button, um, we can use get by text donate. That's the text that is showing up in my button here. Um, and we could also get it by role as we saw in the documentation, get by role button will also work. Um, cool, so we get the elements from the form. Um, um, and what we're trying to test here is that submitting a form makes a post request um, to the API post and adds a new recent donation. So uh, does anyone remember the three steps that we always go through when testing?
So I think it was uh, at the end, I, I think I said there's all three tests will have these three sort of parts. I don't remember what those were. Okay, let's, let's see them here because uh, they are important. So the first one is um, a range. Um, a range, well, this green is going to be a bit hard to see. Oops, red maybe. Act and uh, assert. All tests have this. You have to do some arrangement. You have to perform certain actions, and you want to assert that, given the arrangement and given the actions, you got what you expected. Um, so arrange, act, and assert. All tests have that um, in one way or another. Here, what we're doing is, what we're doing in this area here, uh, is we're arranging. We're arranging our app. We're getting our elements. The next thing that we're going to do is act. And lastly, we're going to assert. Um, so let me then undo all of this. And so we did that. So we're arranging here. The next thing that we want to do is actually put some, um, put some content in those input boxes. Uh, put some content in those input boxes. I, I have to refer back here. Um, yeah, okay. So we do the fire event. So this is where we're going to act. So. Okay. I don't know why it's highlighted like that, but As we act, um, fire or simulate user events, and oh, it. <laughs> I install I install an extension that lets me put emojis in by the name, and that's messing me up a little bit. Simulate user events. Um, here, we're going to simulate a type. So I'm going to do user event that type. We want to type in the name input box. Let's say we want to type uh, John Snow as the username. Um, we want to type in the message user event type. In the message, we want to simulate typing. Uh, Winter is coming. Uh, the amount slider we want to move by default is five. So let's do that. Remember that we can't do it with user event. We need to do it with fire event. So with the fire event um, dot change, passing the amount slider and passing our event. Um, which needs a target, we need to simulate the target, and we need to simulate the value with, let's say he wants to donate $133, $23. And lastly, I don't remember, oops, I have this. Um, let's take a look here. Oh, God, yeah. Um, the way that then, we, this is with simulate filling out the form. Um, now to submit that, uh, we can simulate a click on the button. Um, I think we can do that with user event dot click. We pass in the donate button. We don't need to pass anything else. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do here is assert. 
So let's save this. Let's see if our test is passing. We might get a message. Okay, so it's currently passing, but we haven't we haven't made any assertions, so we can't really trust that passing. We haven't made any assertions that you know any expectations. Um, so what we want to do here is we'll assert that a new donation appears in the screen. Uh, and also assert that um, actions that post was called with something. Um, so we're actually going to do the actions that post was called first. We need to check that actions that post was called. Um, and that is where this gets, you know, we saw all this before. Um, this is the, the new part here. So we saw that we could mark a function. We can mark a handle input function or a handle submit function, and we pass that as props. Um, but app doesn't have any props. Um, we actually want to mark Axios itself. We want to mark the Axios post function um, that our app will import. The way in which we do that is the new part here. We import Axios from Axios first. Um, and then I have to look back at the code because I don't remember exactly. Um, let me see that way we do it here. Oh, okay, yeah, these two things. We do Axios mark from Axios, just mark Axios. Um, so for mocking Axios. I, th I called it Axios mock so that I know that it is not the real one. Um, when we import here, this was when we're importing here, we're, exp we, we're importing the real one, the real Axios. But the next line is what will make it mock, which is just that mock Axios. Here with this line, we're saying, okay, just if you find that any of my components are importing axios just give them give them the mock one don't give them don't give them the real one mock mock axios this is the, this is sort of the most confusing part here um but once we do that i think well it will be interesting if we console log here axios mock let's divert here for a second uh, see if the console log shows up. Yeah, it is showing up. Um, it's just very big <laughs> here. Let me show you Axios mocked. And before this, we should have the original. Axios here. Uh, Axios original, but it still has a bunch of mock stuff. So I didn't think then we're going to be able to see that before and after. Um, yeah, we're not going to be able to see the before and after, but we're seeing that we have here all this is this that we're looking at here is Axios, um, but we can see that it has a bunch of mock stuff. Uh, this is the result of calling uh, just mock Axios, um, which will mock Axios, and then we can then spy on Axios, see if it was called uh, in the way that we wanted to. More explicitly here, what we want to do, um, or you know, differently from what we did before, what we can do here is we can say axios that mock uh, post that um, mock. Wait, do I have the other complete? I'm actually it's not showing up here in the available options. So I'm gonna to have to refer back here. Um, we are going to do, yeah, 
mock re mock resolve value once. So this is what it will actually mock it. Mock resolve value once. You know, if we if we look in those console logs that we were getting there, uh, we will find it. So here we're going to say mock resolve value once, and then we call that. Uh, we can see a simple sugar function for just mock implementation once. Uh, it is going to return a going to return a promise as we can see here in this small documentation. Um, and here, here we want to pass whatever object um, actions will re generally like reply with um, the actions. The data, the the response you get from Axios. Um, do you remember what that looks like when you make an Axios request? What properties do you have uh, in the response object? There you go. The header, I think. Mm -hmm. You get headers. Uh -huh. You get data. Um, and you get a bunch of other other, other ones. Uh, but here the most important one is the data. We want to check that. We want to mock the data that will come back from this Axios mock. Um, so the data that I want to mock is, well, um, let's actually, let's, let me run this really quickly because this is, this is basically the last point. Let me run the app. And let me show you what we're talking about here. So we have our form. We're gonna open here the network tab. Clear this. Um, let's type in something. To lock him out to donate. And then let's click donate. We can see that that fired this network request, a post network request. Uh, and we can see that this was the URL that it was sent to, the method, etc. cetera. Uh, and we can see the response. This is the response that we get back. It's an object that has a name, a message, an amount, and an ID. Um, this is what will be in our REST uh, data um, when we do this with Axios. Um, in Axios, if we go back here to our app, um, here you can see here that I'm destructuring, I'm destructuring data. This is in my actual implementation. Destructuring data. Um, directly from the response. If we do this, this is the full response from Axios. And here I'll need to do res.data. This response will have headers, has data, and has a bunch of other properties. Let's take a quick look. Console log res here. Console log in the response that we got from Axios. So let's clear this, make the network request again. Uh, donate. We see the network request firing. For some reason, the JSON placeholder is sometimes slow and it says, still says pending. Now I just succeeded. Uh, if I go to the console, we can see this is our, this is our JES. This is what JES will reply with, the response object. We can see again data. We can see config, headers, request, status, for instance. Uh, we can check if it went well. We're checking if that status is a 201 or a 200. Um, and this is, then this object, this entire object that we got from chest, this is what we need to mock here. This is what we need to mock here. From there, in, interesting and important, only the data property. We would just want to check, we just want to mock that if our function was call um, and that this was, uh, this mock data was what was returned. So here, let's take a look at then, or any, any questions about that before we write it? Um, I just I was just wondering. So the real Axios is inside app.js, right? Correct. Yeah. And on app.test.js, uh, it's the mock. So it's basically getting information from app.js. Is that? Um, it's gonna get the information from. Um, it's gonna get that information 
from here, once we write that information here. So the real axis is in app, uh, in app.js. In app.test.js, we import the real axios here. Um, but then right after we import it, we mock it. So uh, I just will change internally the implementation of Axios so that uh, we can, so that if it detects that anything in our code is calling Axios.post, we can spy on it and see what was, uh, that it was called, and as well as mocking the value, mocking the return value of that. Um, this is, you know, we want, we want to mock data because um, um, we don't want our test to actually change our, you know, our real application or add a new stuff to our database, for instance. Um, but that data will come from here once we write it here. Um, so let's move on to that and let me know if it makes a little bit more sense. Um, so here we're saying whenever my application call axios.post, let's mock the result value only once, meaning like let's mock the result of that promise the result of that network call with this, with this object that I'm creating here. Um, and the data that we should expect if we, if we think about it, well, if you type John Doe, good luck, and you set the, the slider, um, well, here, if we, if we type John Snow, and we type the winter is, com winter is coming, and we set the value of the slider to 123, we should expect to get that back. So in here, let's do, to mock the result value, we're gonna do name, this would be John Snow. Uh, message, winter is coming. I think this is a capital W. Uh, amount. I forgot what was the amount that we expected, 123. Uh, I wonder if that's gonna be going as a number or as a string. Um, we can check that later. Uh, but here, this is a mocking, this is me literally typing in the data that actually that post should return uh, to our app when we are testing. Um, and then this data, then we're gonna expect to find this data in the list of donations, basically. Um, let's check. Um, let's check our test here. Give me a test. Um, oh, so cool. We can see. Interestingly, we see this console log that I left in AppJS line forty-two. Uh, if we go to AppJS line forty-two, this is. Uh, this is REST, I guess. This is the response that we also console log in the browser. Um, and we can see this object with a key data and inside of that key, um, there is just the data object that I mocked here. This data is this here that we mocked. Um, so in this fashion is that we're mocking the, our applications code calling something external, calling Axios, um, with the post method, and we mock the result like that because again, we don't want our we don't want our test to add something to our database. In fact, we don't want our test to actually make a network request. A network request is uh, um, something that we don't know if it's going to succeed or fail, um, and our test should never make network requests. Um, network requests also imply that something is going to be changed, something is going to be added, something is going to be removed. Uh, we're mocking that here. We're, we know that Axios is, we're using Axios for making that network request, but we do sort of, we intercept that call with the mock version um, and we mock the result of that operation. Um, this will work with any, like if you're not using Axios, if you're using Fetch uh, or if you're using any other, I think there's some, another one called Super Agent, uh, another library to make network requests, you can mock them in this same way. Um, Joanne, let me get back to you. Um, is this um, making a little bit more sense? Yeah. So 
maybe once, so it might not be fully making sense, but once we um, check, once we check that, then if our data receives, if our component receives this data, then we should expect a new, a new row in the recent donations table, um, you know, as we look at here. Um, Here we saw that that Alejo donated 82 will appear new there. That's, what, that's the next thing that we're gonna check. If I do James Bond and we do good luck, um, donate that and uh, the placeholder is a little bit slow, but after some time it will appear here, right? This is the next thing that we need to check. We need to check that given this result that our network request gave us back, you know, mocked, we want to expect that we have an element in the recent donations list that has this content. And this is the final point. So, um, oh, actually, let me, let's move this one here. Um, so we want to check that a new recent donation appears on the screen. So let's check what this is. So it should say the name um donated and whatever amount so we can do that if we try to say um let's try to say so remember that these elements are divided this is a header and this is a p tag so i'm gonna get this first uh saying something like let um heading or donation heading equal um get by text and here um is it at screen dot oh screen that thank you screen screen dot get by text and here you know if we typed in these values with john snow uh winter is coming we should expect something saying well john snow donated uh, $123. Uh, and then we can just check the donation heading to be in the document. So let's try this one first. Uh, in fact, we're going to see something interesting happen. Um, and is this. Unable to find an element with the text, Jones Snow donated one, uh, $123. This could be because the text is broken, um, et cetera, and it shows, it shows what is currently being rendered, right? So this is our entire app. You can see the, you can see the heading. Wait, somebody just came back. Oh, yeah. um, we can see the heading. We can see the recent donations, for instance. In fact, we can see that there are some donations there. John donated 30. Uh, Emily donated 110, Sam donated 30. Those are because those are without, those are some donations that we have hard coded here that will display by default. Um, but here we're interested to see there's one that says Jon Snow donated 123, and we don't see that one. We just see Sam donated go to Miami, and below there there should be a Jon Snow donated 120. So we see the status bar raised 170 off. A thousand. Um, we see percentage, etc. Uh, all the inputs, the form, but we didn't see in the recent donations list. Um, we didn't see that new donation with Jon Snow donated 123. So we are not seeing that. We're not being able to get that, and our state is failing is because well, this is still a synchronous operation. Submitting the form and firing the post is still an asynchronous operation and we need to await for that. So instead of get by text, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use find by text. If you look at the documentation, and this is still gonna fail, but if you look at the documentation, find by text um, will, is supposed to be used when something is going to take some time and you need to wait for it. The next thing that we need to do here is await screen find by text. Find by text will return a promise. Hopefully our test will pass, um, but it didn't. Um, so we have cannot use keyboard await outside of an async function. Um, 
what that is telling us is that up here uh, in our test, this is our callback function that has all our test logic. We need to put async here. And maybe now to be in the document is not a function. Okay, so the error moved. So maybe this worked. Uh, does anyone know if I'm have a spelling mistake here? Let's take a look at this other previous test one to finalize this. To be cool, not the form, maybe the donation card. To be in the document. You didn't do expect to be. Ah, great, thank you, exactly. Expect. Spelling mistakes, I still consider this kind of spelling mistakes. Expect the donation heading to be in the document. Let's try that. Now we have our test passing. In fact, just so that we see, just so that we see that it's actually in the screen, even though this is enough, uh, let's try to do uh, screen uh, debug, which will just print, we'll just print the HTML uh, that we have. Um, we see their header, we see our recent donations list, we see John donated 30, Emily 110, Sam 30, and lastly we see John donated 123. And we see the P tag that says winter is coming. Um, so we can see that then in this way we tested that our component um, will make an or request to um, to our API in this case, to your API, to your backend, um, and that it returns what you expect. Uh, that at the end, once it has that result, it will add a new element to the, um, it will add a new element to the recent donations list. Um, I think here, I think this is, this part I actually realized we don't really need it, but we could do actions mock that post that, uh, or actually expect, Actions mode to have been called with, um, and we can pass in here. If we look at our component, uh, we see that Axios, the way in which Axios is called is um, with the with the HTML uh, with the URL and with the donation. Um, and we could check if that that was called. I think I'm not gonna check that it was called with just because of, we also need the donation. Um, even though we can, we can do that. Um, so I'm just gonna check that it was called, have been called. Um, and then if we go back to our terminal, our test should still be passing. Um, we do not to have been called, should fail because we did call that, our component is calling that. See, expect the number of calls zero, it received a number of calls of one. So then that's um, will be here. So we have all this stuff is a range, then act, finally assert. And I'm gonna leave it here because I wanna answer a few questions, but you can see how then from here we can test that the heading is there, that the heading is there, that the paragraph is there. Uh, we could also check that, well, that this also appears within the recent donations, um, UL list, uh, et cetera. Um, any questions, thoughts? I know that this is, this is quite a lot. You're gonna have to, well, if you really want to implement this, you're gonna need to, uh, review the code, read the documentation. Um, questions or thoughts? Uh, I do have a question. Uh, how is the Axios response the related to the tests below, like the uh, the assert part? Um, so, oh, this part, this part. 
How is yes, that related the, yes. to the SR? Yeah. So it's related, I guess, indirectly. I guess we could do that. Like that's part that's part of the arrange, actually. Um, yeah, let's put this here. It's part of the arranging in a mock network request with access. Post. Um, the way in which that's related is um, hmm. I guess it will so if we don't mock here, I guess if we don't if we don't do this, what happens is that when we're let's say we're adding something to uh, let's say we're posting a note, uh, in this case we're posting that donation and we actually have our backend that is gonna handle that donation. If we don't mock Axios, what happens is that our test will fire an actual network request that will go out to our backend and add something to the backend. And we don't want our tests to be adding stuff to our backend directly. Like the test is just supposed to be for testing. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, tests are not supposed to, are supposed to interact with the outside world um, as little as possible. When they interact with the outside world, what we do is we mock those things. We mock the outside or the communication between our app and the outside world. That's what we're, that's a way we can think about it here. Um, we're mocking that network request. So the way in which this is related is we know that our component, um, when we click here, when we click the donate button, our component will make an Axios call to submit that somewhere to our backend, most likely. Um, and we want, we, we want that not to go to our backend. We just, we want to, um, we're just testing. We don't want anything in our backend to be changed. So what we do here is we mock, we mock the result of that access call. We mock, okay, if any of our code calls access.post, um, then return with this, return this uh, object that has a data property with this information in. Um, don't actually make the network close, just, you know, return this. And to our app, to our, our app doesn't know that it's running on a test environment. To our app, you, you want, so one thing also, this is true for all testing. You want your test environment to be as close as possible to the real environment. That's why there is like a just DOM, with, um, a JS DOM that let us simulate like events in the DOM, let us uh, query the DOM. So you want your test environment to simulate as much as possible your real user environment. Um, and, and that's the case here. Um, we're, we're simulating that as much as possible. So our app, our app doesn't know that it's not running like for real. Um, um, but our app will call, will import Axios, will import Axios, and then it will make a call with Axios.post. Um, and here then we're just saying, yeah, if Axios, if our app at any point calls Axios.post, don't, don't let it actually use Axios, the real Axios, let's respond with this. Once we respond with this, then we should expect that if our application got this response, we need to expect that a new recent donation has been added um, that says, you know, that has the content of what we, um, that has, that has a paragraph like this that was constructed of what the network request replied with. The network request replied with John Snow um, in the amount $123. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure how clear that was. Um, I mean, how can I? Yeah, I think I got it. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, what's testing like on the back end? Uh, so we're not we're gonna get to see that at a later point. Uh, I wanted us to see this. Uh, it's going to be s similar. Well, we're still gonna be used using Jest. When we're doing it in the back end, we don't have like the screen find by text. We don't need any of that. We just import our app, um, and we're gonna be using something called Super Test, which is. Um, is it's like Axios, it lets you do network requests, but it lets you not do network requests for real, like uh, simulate them in a way, um, uh, etc. And that's that's sort of the drift. Um, 
the brief to the gist of it. Um, we're going to get to see that like maybe next week. I, I know that there's something planned. Um, we might move that um, or at some point in the upcoming weeks, we're going to see that. Uh, Janesh. Okay, so you're saying the Axios mock that was the first one? That, that one intercepts the real Axios request? That's correct. This intercepts the real Axios request. If you had a, a second Axios, another say, call. Say that again? What if you had like another Axios call? Would you have to make another Axios mock? Uh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think there is um, there's another one of these. Actually, that's a good question. So anything that you don't like, uh, maybe you don't understand from here, what you could do is literally just Google that. So I'm gonna Google the name of this function. Um, and I'm gonna say jest. And you're gonna get some results. I'm gonna go to the documentation here. So mock functions, you know, um, this is all really good documentation. Let's see, this is mock result value. So mock result value once mocked, I wonder if there is one there where you could do multiple ones. I, I didn't think mock result value. Maybe, yeah, I guess here's an example um, that you can, you can, oh, so you can just keep adding them. So mock result value once, um, and then mock result value only once this. You can just keep chaining them for however many uh, network requests your application is doing. And we can see here, when we call it for the first time, that's the first call that's gonna do default, single call, et cetera. So that's what you will do here. Also, if your application is making like more than two network, like one, or let's say it's making two network requests, it might be worth uh, checking to see if that's actually one functional item, if it could be broken into two tests because they're actually separate functionality. Um, yeah. Other questions? I have one. Um, do you need to be connected to like, do you need to have a real backend to test the backend? Uh, yes, we're gonna need to, once we get into backend, um, no, what, I, what I'm trying to ask is like this mock Axios request, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you said that it's intercepting a real request that the app is doing. Correct. But what happens if the app is doing a request to uh, an existent URL? Um, if the app is making a request to an existing URL, like to a real, to a real backend, right? No, to a fa to a no backend, to like any place, like that doesn't yeah. matter. Will the test fail or pass? Um, the test, the test will pass. I think I didn't verify that, but I think the test will pass, okay. and you will end up having added something that was test data onto your backend. Or, or that data is actually sent because Axios was not mocked. Axios do its job, which is send that data to whatever URL um, you need to send it. Um, and the other thing is that like, Axios also works in Node. So Axios is, is uh, cross environment. Axios works in the browser. And also, all, Axios also works in Node. So in, for this I mean, particular case, I'm very confident that if you, you don't mock Axios, it's going to add it to our actual backend. It's going to actually send the request. Yeah. The question is, uh, maybe I, you didn't understand what I'm trying to ask. Like, do you need to have a running backend at the time you do the test? Um, okay, yeah, no, you can see that like here, I, here I don't have, this is not my backend. In fact, I think here, if I have something like, oh wait, it's not working. This doesn't exist at all. Let's try it out. I think it will still pass. Yeah. Um, again, it's because the URL doesn't matter. Yeah, the URL doesn't matter to where the network request is going. We were just mocking that whenever post was called, um, that this is returned. So you don't have to have a so you don't have to oh, have a okay. running backend. This, this doesn't exist, there's you nothing. You don't have to need 
That's awesome. That's really useful because you don't need to have a backend to test your app. Yeah. Really good. That's actually yes. That's actually a very good point. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. You can start. You can start testing your app uh, before having a backend, uh, mocking everything, uh, or not mocking everything, mocking the network request. Um, yeah, it's like I, it's trying to sink in what uh, Sergey just said. Like this really lets you test your app without having to have backend first. Um, and just mocking the response, mocking what is expected to be received back. Um, other questions, final. Okay, sorry to go over 20 minutes. Uh, I hope everyone has a good lunch. Um, I'm gonna push this code. Remember that the repo that has this code uh, has the three branches, like master is all untested. Tested app is the final version of this. Uh, and test written during class, which has what we wrote here. Uh, they differ a little bit, but we're still accomplishing everything. There's a lot of tests that we couldn't implement there just because of the sake of time. Uh, but definitely check those out in the tested app branch uh, for reference. If you run into any troubles, you know that um, um, just sign up in the help sign up form um, and we're gonna, we'll, we'll get to you um at some point um and i'm gonna push this i'm gonna make the recording available on youtube share the link as usual um uh, for the afternoon i hope you have um sprint sprint planning meetings um with your team uh thinking about what you want to set what do you want to accomplish this week um and yeah i'll see you all later reach out at any point okay, have a good lunch hour everyone thank you very much for this